I won't go through all the steps right now though, and I will show you exactly how I got to this point. And um, the goof up happened over on the bandsaw, so I'll show you what I did wrong. Let's go. So what I ended up doing is just running and grabbing a piece of 1x8 curly maple here. Get yourself some min mineral spirits over here and just give it a quick wipe down. That's really going to make everything pop out, give you a better idea of what it's going to look like. you'll really be able to see all that grain pop. Slice a section off that you're going to need. For the Telecaster you're going to need 16 inches long so you're going to want to make it about 17 or so give yourself a little bit of extra room. And then what we'll do is we'll just take it to a bandsaw and we are going to resaw this which just means you're splitting it right down the center. We'll just take it all the way down. So now that we've got our center line marked here and I already set up my fence. So it's right down the middle there. Here is where I messed up. First of all, I should be attaching a larger fence to this. There are uh, bolt holes on here that go all the way through. And what I can do is I could just attach, you know, a piece of MDF or any type of wood and just come up with a higher fence. So that way it sits squarely against it. There's less room for, uh, you know, sway back and forth. So that's where I messed up. I was so worried about following my top line there that I wasn't even paying attention to the bottom, and the bottom ended up kicking out on me. And I didn't even pay attention, so by the time I went through, by the time I noticed it, I should say, I was already, geez, almost coming out the end of the board there. So that's where I messed up, and I was already in pretty deep there too. And I didn't want to go scrapping that piece, so I ended up just having to plane it down thinner. That's, that's what happened. That's what happened. So now that we've gone and ripped our stock all the way down, it's got to be pretty thin material now, which I don't like to run straight into the planer. Not safe. So what I do is I'll make what's called a sled. Basically, this was just an old shelf I had lying around, and I ended up cutting it. This one is 24, you know, quite a bit longer than our work pieces. And you could go ahead and you could use um, whatever you want. If you want to use MDF or plywood you have lying around, whatever you got. So what we end up doing then, use your double stick tape to cure it to the sled, make these little blocks, same thing. Whatever scrap you have lying around, um, MDF, that's all I used. Same thing, double stick tape. These aren't the actual ones I use. It's just scrap to show you guys. Now, the reason I put these blocks down are to eliminate any snipe from the planer over here. I know mine. This planer right here, I'll get about two inches of snipe, which snipe is just where it takes off more material on the ends than it does throughout the center. So in order to keep that from happening, put these what look like frog legs down there, and we'll tape it down, and I will measure mine out to about two inches so I know, I, you know, depends on your planer, your planer might be different. So I have my two inches there, so this way when I feed it into the planer, these pieces right here are going to take the snipe. Okay, so now that we've run this through our planer, we got it to the thickness that we wanted, now it's almost time to glue up. I should also mention that before I even started cutting this on the bandsaw, I did run it through my, uh, I've got a bench top joiner, so I did run it through there and I, I did true up the ends, so, um, but when it comes time for gluing, sometimes it's may not go together perfect so what I'm going to do is I'll show you on some scraps I have over here actually they're not scraps these are what I use for fingerboards just haven't cut them up yet anyway just 
imagining this is our stock, what he'll do is he'll fold them in half, just put them on a level surface, and you can use any straight edge you have. I've got some uh, self-stick sandpaper that I'll stick to this. This is just a uh, this is a front level beam I have, but the other side is perfectly level, so that'd be good. Or if you have a level at home that you could throw some sandpaper on, anything with a perfectly straight edge. So then what you do is you'll just run it right along those edges. Sand it down nice and good. So this way, when you fold them down, you'll have a nice, perfect seam there without any gaps. So then now we'll go on to how I glue these together. Okay, now that you're ready to glue, there's a couple of ways you can do this. One of them is um, like the setup you see here. Now normally I wouldn't use MDF, but that's just what I had laying around, it's just to show you how I do this. Take your two strips, and you want to set it up. Well, first of all, I'll put down a, a piece of a wax paper, parchment paper, whatever you want to call it. I'll, I'll throw that down for any squeeze out. So you want to have this set up. So when you put your two pieces together, going to form a little pitch. Well, I don't have it set up perfect right now, but it's going to set up a little pitch like that. You're going to be about half inch, three quarters off the um, table like that. That way when everything's glued up, all you've got to do is push down and the force will hold it together. Like I said, I normally don't use MDF because MDF will tend to bow. Use some solid wood. You could also, if you want, if you don't have a workbench, you could just cut out um, a piece of MDF or if you have plywood lying around, whatever you've got. Or you could use your table saw, if you have a table saw. Um, another way of doing this, you could just, if you wanted to, you could just cut little blocks also and nail them in to your MDF or plywood or whatever you have if you want nail it right into your workbench why not um, another way of doing this is just the same exact setup just like this except you wouldn't have so much pressure on these clamps just go ahead and release it just so it's holding it in place then you can go ahead and use your bar clamps and squeeze it together now don't squeeze so much that you're going to squeeze all the glue out of the joint. You'll end up with a dry joint and any pressure put on it afterwards, after it dries, we'll just split it in half. So clamp it down just to close up the gaps and um, that's all you want to do. You don't want to put too much pressure, especially on this thin wood. Um, then after you go ahead and do that, take a, uh, a damp rag and just wipe up all of your excess glue. Then what I'll do usually, if I end up doing the methods, which I usually do, if I, I'll end up using this method where you squeeze down, the pressure holds it in place. Then what I'll end up doing is putting another piece of wax paper over on top over here. And I'll throw a block on top of it and I'll clamp that down. Because especially that thin stuff, if you don't put anything on top of it, all that pressure will cause these pieces to bow. One of them will end up bowing usually. And then um, that's it. Let's sit overnight. And then in the morning, all you have to do is uh, just scrape off the excess glue. Most of the time, I'll just use a scraper. Just a scraper and, and that's it. Then it's ready to go on top of the body. Another little tip. If you don't plan on using this right away, and I mean probably even within a day, set it on a flat surface and put something heavy on top of it. Uh, if you have another body blank lying around or even a body you just cut, just keep some pressure on there because these thin pieces will have, especially any type of curly maple, 
they will have a tendency to start warping on you right away. So make sure you keep some pressure on there, keep them nice and flat. Now that our top is set, line it right up with our center of our top. Once you've got it centered, trace around it. And then once again, we'll just head over to the bandsaw and we'll cut our shape out. Now that we've got the uh, top rough cut out, it's not quite ready to glue yet. What I'm going to end up doing is I'll cut the uh, F-hole out first before we apply the top. And then on the inside here, I'm going to end up routing a channel for the wire over to the control panel. And uh, over here I will end up sanding all of this out. Get it nice and smooth. I'm going to grain fill it then and I'm going to put a finish on it. So this way when you're looking through the F-hole you'll have a nice finish inside there. A bit of a tip for you guys also, save your cutoffs. This part right here would make a great control panel for another guitar or even if you want to use it on this one which I still haven't uh, decided if I'm going to put a uh, traditional pick card on it or if I'm going to uh, go ahead and put a control panel on the back of this. We'll see. We'll see as time goes on. But anyway, quick little tip. You got control panel. You can use it for uh, truss rod cover if you wanted to. Um, pick up rings. Many things. Just don't toss them. Hold on to them. I went online and I just downloaded and uh, printed out a picture of an F-hole. Um, oddly enough, it was really hard to find. Um, I thought it would be easy to find a template online. It wasn't. And if I did find one, it it print out really small or it wouldn't print out at all. So I ended up finding this one and it, was, uh, it came out small. So I just enlarged it on my printer. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just cut it out and I will transfer it over to my black cardstock over here. It's a little bit thicker. This way if I ever need it in the future, I'll just, I'll have it in the files. So uh, now I'll just cut that out using uh, my scissors that I only use on my most delicate work. Here, I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so what I've done here, I ended up cutting out my F-hole. And uh, so what you want to do your template on top of your top, line up your center, center marks, then you could drop in your F-hole template or cutout, and you just, this gives you an idea then, you know exactly where you want your F-hole at. Like here I'm just leaving about a quarter inch space, top and bottom. So all you got to do then is go ahead and trace that out, which I already did, so now you know where you want it. And you don't have to go with the F-hole. You could go with whatever design you want. Um, spice it up a little bit. I just happen to go with F-hole. It's a little more traditional. And then what I'm going to do, personally, is I'm going to go on our solid Telecaster template. I'm going to put an F-hole in it. Only because I'm going to be making multiple guitars, thin lines. So, um, it's going to be easier for me I've done thin lines in the past, but I never did actually make a template for it. I would just do it one at a time, and I would use this method. I would just trace around here, and I would just cut this out with a uh, uh, jigsaw with a scroll blade on it. So uh, this time I'm going to be doing it different. I'll end up cutting it out with the router bit, so that's why I'm going to make the template for it, but you don't have to.
Now you want to get this as perfect as, as you can on the template. So this way when you transfer it over to your uh, actual top, you don't have too much fidgeting around to do with filing and trying to get it just right. So now this is ready, we can put it on top of our top and cut that out. All right, now that we're ready to cut out our F-hole, first thing I did is I went ahead and I taped our top to the template. Just go ahead and center it up, tape it up on there. Now if you don't have a router table, that's fine. You can just take, these are the scraps from the uh, body blank. Just go ahead and set some scraps up underneath your workpiece. And you're going to want to clamp this down, get it secure. Then you can just go ahead with the router from up on top and route it out. I'm going to use the table. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole here so we can go ahead and insert our router blade through there and I'll show you how to cut that out on the table. Here is the bit we'll be using. This is a 316 spiral bit and this one does not have a bearing. This is actually the same bit that I use for my truss rods. So the shaft is actually what's going to ride along the template there. All right, that came out beautifully. So I'm gonna clean up. These are supposed to be sharp edges right here. I'll just go ahead and clean that up with a file. You're obviously not gonna get it sharp because you're using a round router bit. So I'm just gonna clean that up and we'll be ready to go.